Hi there, my name's Andy and uh, I've been asked to say a little bit more about uh, these rotary switches and uh, this is a, a little wafer switch and um, this one's uh, out of somebody else's junk box, uh, not mine and um, you can see where this contact getting close uh, where this contact rubs on this bit of track and then this finger uh, is um, comes into contact here, here or here so it's making contact from here to the comma and then to the different positions let me show you that okay so there's one two three positions and then we've got the same on the the other side and I don't know if it's very clear but the track on this side isn't very worn it's not very marked compared to this one and that's because in fact this track this contact isn't making contact can you see that I'll just zoom in okay I'll try and hold it still so can you see that it's Just got a little sliver of paper there. Yeah. You see, there's actually a gap there. Now there are two contacts here. There's uh, the contact on the top and the other contact on the bottom. I'm trying to look through the camera and do this. It's it's really quite tricky. Um, okay yeah, it's, it's a bit too tricky for me to see but there's another contact underneath anyway this top one hasn't been making contact for a little while and uh, what may have happened is somebody may have tried to clean it and actually bent it uh, you can use a little bit of paper to clean a contact um, some again I've been asked about how do I clean a contact and normally I'd use um, a bit of switch cleaner uh, but more recently I've found that WD-40 works just as well the contact on the other side there that one you can see that's that, that's good I can't get the paper under there but if it was a, a particularly dirty switch then uh, I may try and uh, get that paper under the contact there put a little bit of WD-40 on it and move it backwards and forwards so a bit tricky because I'm trying to look through the camera and do the job so um, it, it's possible to do that but if you force the contact up let's imagine that somebody has uh, been cleaning the contact on this side there and say that that one's really loose if somebody's been cleaning the contact and they've actually lifted it off let's say they've been really stupid about it and say right look that's that's really gone now you'll never push that contact back in because the can't see it uh, because it's gone beyond its elastic limit so the only way we can make that make contact again is to push the contact push the spring in that direction I'll put a little arrow on the camera and let me show you how I'll do that I'm just going to zoom out a little bit okay hopefully I'll be uh, in close enough what I'm going to do is hold my thumbnail on the contact and then actually pull this part towards me don't know if you actually caught that action there but now that is making good contact just try and slip the paper in there that will only go in if I poke it in with a screwdriver and you'll see it's it's it, it, it's got it. it it there is 
a nice action there. I'll just do that again for the benefit of the microphone. I've put it in now. I'm going to come close to the microphone. I'm going to pull it out and you'll hear it go click. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if that was clear, but I'll, I'll give you another little demonstration of what I've actually done there. Okay, if we imagine that this is uh, one of the fixed contacts on the switch, it's a little bit of copper I've got here, but if we just pretend that it's one of the contacts, and uh, the contact is shaped roughly like that, and uh, when it's held in position it's in good contact with uh, the desk there, so when the um, moving contact comes past it actually lifts this contact so the, that little bit of cardboard is lifting it and there's good contact pressure between the copper and the cardboard now we said that if the switch had been damaged and it had been lifted like that no no amount of pressing down will hold it uh, in contact with uh, the the moving contact but if we raise this part and push this part in then we can get to a stage where now when we put the card under it, it lifts it. So we've actually applied, and I'm getting under the end, we've made it now that the uh, fixed contact, represented by the copper, is in uh, good contact with the moving contact, represented by the cardboard. Um, I hope that's clear. Um, so it's just a way of being able to uh, resurrect a switch that otherwise is uh, useless. Um, incidentally, contact pressure is of more use than large contact surface area. And you'll find on uh, modern uh, circuit breakers and uh, uh, contactors, the area of contact is relatively small compared to what it was uh, many years ago um, but the pressure is much higher and if you look in a miniature circuit breaker you'll see that it has very small uh, contacts but providing a lot of pre pressure so these little contacts they're never going to pass a lot of current but if they uh, haven't got enough pressure um, they won't be any good Never use sandpaper or emery cloth or anything like that to try and clean them. I say a, a little bit of switch cleaner and uh, a little bit of uh, uh, paper can be used to just get under there. It's very rare that you need to actually add anything um, other than switch cleaner. We say a little bit of paper like that, a little bit of WD-40 on it. Just lubricate that switch and just just clean it off. Um, okay, I hope you found that interesting and helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.